protuberance. Uh, you can see on this side it has a little bit of a flat, rounded area. That flat, rounded, smooth area matches up with the flat area inside the axis. It's a little hard to see. But so when you have them stacked, those two match up, and that allows for that pivot, and that's shaking your head no. So axis responsible for no, atlas responsible for yes. Then you'll have, uh, so these are cervical vertebrae one and two. Three, for, three through seven are these tiny vertebrae. Uh, easiest way to identify these is they're the smallest ones you're going to come across. But if you don't have all the vertebrae, you just have one of these. Um, it has a very small body. It's a spinuous process. It's very small, uh, especially when you compare it to a thoracic vertebrae, uh, much longer spinuous process than the lumbar. Uh, big thick one, but really you shouldn't be confusing a lumbar with a cervical, just a huge size difference. Um, I usually remember the cervical vertebrae as not any of the other ones, but uh, that's just me. All right, so you have... The transverse foramen is very... So that foramen is the transverse process? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Those are typical cervical vertebrae. Okay. So yeah. Anyone else have a question? Okay. So yeah, interrupt me at any time. I'm just going through my quick... Oh, that's good. <laughs> All right, so the thoracic vertebrae have the long spinuous process. They also have the costal facets. Remember, uh, thoracic vertebrae are in your rib cage. Costal facets articulate basically in between the two vertebrae. So if my pinky is the rib, rib is going to be right in here with the inferior articular facet, or inferior costal facet of the upper vertebrae and the superior costal facet of the lower vertebrae. The ribs basically in between. Um, and the costal facets are unique to the thoracic vertebrae, like I said, because of the rib cage. Lumbar vertebrae, big old body. Um, Books has a hatchet-shaped spinuous process. Uh, that's this end. Um, that's pretty, I mean, lumbars are basically huge. Um, Get confused, but they, 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 the facet that articulates with the other person. You see how they, they turn medium? Oh, okay. <coughs> in the thoracic, they turn posteriorly. So, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's the same. That restricts the movement of the different, of the different areas of the, of the vertebrae function. Okay. There you go. Okay, so the uh, articulating facets, they articulate with the uh, vertebrae above it, and these ones, they're medially oriented, so basically more or less pointing forwards and backwards, whereas in the thoracic and cervicals, they're oriented anterior and posterior, is what uh, Claudia was getting at. All right, so that's pretty much the vertebrae. Anybody have any questions on vertebrae, differentiating between them? Uh, the book says to remember them, uh, seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and then five lumbar. Uh, think of it as meal times. You got 7 a.m., noon, and then 5 p.m., roughly, you know, assuming that's when you eat dinner. But that's basically uh, how you can remember how many of the cervical, uh, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae there are. Oh, true. Um one of our teachers, I think, in human phys says eight, and then anatomy says seven. It's getting confusing while studying for that. What? Human, human physiology, yeah, human physiology, Chad Wayne says eight. Eight one. Eight one. Uh, he cervical. Seven. He seven. Yeah, but he, human phys, he said eight. And then we got confused between human, what he said in human anatomy and then what he said in human phys. So we're... I think it's seven. Okay. Maybe just have a slip of Because our, our slides in human phys is eight. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I basically, for my class, I basically went over the detail that I wanted them to know. Um, but I'll, if you, I was going to go. Am I the only one in your class? I think you're the only one. Okay. I'm good. Right. <laughs> so, because <laughs> like I don't know if I should go over there listening. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, who, who's class are you in? Ruth. Who's Ruth? 
Um, I mean, it's always good to check with your TA. Um, I'm giving the spiel I give my class. I mean, so the anatomy is the same. Um, she may emphasize something else that I don't, but regardless, there's going to be questions that are identify blank, right? Um, everything that Claudia and I have just told you is a good way to identify the vertebrae. Um, she may ask you a specific uh, like process or something that I didn't necessarily just cover. I was basically just going over how to identify them. Um, but in general, I mean, I did cover a lot, but most of the vertebrae have similar anatomy, right? All, all of them have, well, except for the axis and atlas, all of them have a spinous process, all of them have uh, the articular facets, um, but they all have the, is it the vertebral foramen? The, yeah, the vertebral foramen where the spinal column is going. They all have a body. Um, so, I mean, a lot of the terminology overlaps. Um, it's really up to you if you want to go and talk to Ruth or if you want to uh, listen to, you know, our talk. I'm not sure what, I guess Ugo was just kind of going over everything. Um, I'm just going to say, normally at Open Labs, we don't do this. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever done something like this at Open Labs because we have so many people. Normally it's just y'all ask us questions. So we're kind of doing this on the fly, uh, trying to figure this out. Um, <laughs> Worksheets or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm all, no, if you have, I mean, I'm all ears. I have a question. Yeah. Generally speaking, I know each TA, each TA does it differently probably, but usually are like, you know, like the radius and ulna going to be set up together, and like the tibia and fibula, will they be set up together, or are they just going to be on their own and kind of like, okay, what's this bone? So that's, T, who's your TA? Ruth. Yeah, so you're going to have to ask her. Um, I told my classes, um, for if I'm asking for like left or right, I wouldn't, I personally am not going to ask the radius or the fibula by themselves for left or right. Just because they're kind of hard to tell when they're by themselves, I would give you, but the, like the humerus, the ulna, um, and the femur and tibia are a lot easier to determine left and right as a standalone bone. Um, but if you're, I'm asking like, you know, what is this bone? If it is the radius, then it can be a standalone. Um, so it just kind of depends. And also, so we ha obviously have plenty of individual bones, but we also have the full arm models. Um, it just depends on, so we're all gonna, all the TAs will be using the same, if there's a bone at a station, all the TAs are using that same bone. Um, we may not necessarily be asking the same questions, um, asking the same parts of the bone, stuff like that, but we'll all be, all be using the same bone. So it'll be uniform in that regard. Um, the station, <laughs> stations, for the most part, will be uniform across the labs, but the questions won't be, if that makes sense. Thanks. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> what do you guys want to know? You need to talk now, because I, I mean, I know I have some of my students here. All right. So when you grab a clavicle, there's a tubercle. Uh, it's basically like a little point. Here, I'll, since you asked the question, I'll give you one of them. <laughs> All right, so you have the tubercle on the clavicle. It's basically the point on it, which is, I mean, if you, have, if you open your book to the diagram, it'll better illustrate what I'm talking about. It's called something. It's, the, it's something tubercle. Yeah. I just call it the tubercle. All right. So that's on the inferior side. So you find the tubercle, that's pointing down. It's on the acromial end. It's acromial end because it attaches to, or articulates to the acromion of the scapula, right? So you know, uh, this is the acromial end, this is what's attaching to the scapula. So you can kind of, you know, then so you know it's either attaching right there or it's attaching right there. Because you know this is the inferior side, you know this is attaching to the scapula. And your clavicle bows out. Um, just think of it, if you, had, if you have it on the wrong side, just think about this clavicle is bowing into your body. It doesn't seem to make, so if you have it here, it's bowing out, and you can see that that's kind of more the anatomy. Um, I don't really have a better way to determine left or right, but basically, uh, tubercles on the inferior side, it's on the acromial end, this is the side that attaches the scapula, and then you have, you can kind of just move it. <laughs> That's weird. Something I usually say is um, uh, if you look at this, um, look at the sternal end, it's usually really flat. 
when you compare them. Some of the, well, some of the models are not that good, a little fatter and flatter with 